Hey everybody, welcome to the video. It's going to be my first look for week six of the NFL season over on DraftKings. But before we continue, as always, if you guys could just leave a like, and if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps me out, and I really do appreciate that. I'll be here all season long trying to help you guys become better NFL DFS players, and I cover other sports as well. So if you're going to be a frequent visitor of the channel, it really helps me out. If you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, all that fun stuff, and I really do appreciate that. And if you don't follow me over on social media, the handle is in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. And if you miss more content over on Patreon, that is always much appreciated. I put a lot of extra work into this each and every single week. So if you just want to support the channel or you want to get access to the extra stuff, you get access to the entire NFL DFS data sheet, cheat sheet, and some other stuff, including a Discord chat. Links down below for all that if you're interested. And if not, that's totally fine. Let's just dive into today's first look video. And as always, we'll start with the quarterback position. And up top, I like Deshaun Watson the most if we're spending up. Yes, Lamar Jackson does exist, but to be honest, he's not really been paying off his price tag too much. And I really want to pay $8,000 for him. I believe he's 7700 specifically. But Deshaun Watson, he's coming off his best game of the season, which coincidence or not, it was without Bill O'Brien. His first game without Bill O'Brien, he had his best game of the year. And the Texans offense looked pretty solid. They were putting up some points, and I believe Deshaun Watson had over 350 passing yards, which makes... At two games in a row where he's been over 300 passing yards, and I like this game quite a bit for DFS purposes. I think a lot of guys in the Texans are pretty interesting, and I like a lot of guys in the Tennessee Titans. Ryan Tannehill, who I'll mention in a little bit, A.J. Brown, John New Smith, Derrick Henry. So I think this is a pretty good game for DFS purposes. Pretty high over under at 53 and only a three-point spread, so I expect it to be a pretty back-and-forth game. Also, both teams play at a decently high pace as well. Now, if we're looking at Watson's numbers this season, now keep in mind, he has ramped it up a bit the past two games, but overall, nearly 300 passing yards per game, 8.9 yards per attempt, not really doing too much in the rushing category, which we know he's a capable running quarterback. I mean, he's got plenty of mobility. He just hasn't really been running too much this season, but the upside is there for that if need be. In the Titans, they're 19th DVA. DVOA versus the pass currently, only allowing 20.6 DraftKings points per game to quarterbacks, which is exactly mid-pack as that's 16th. And overall, I think it's still a fine spot for Deshaun Watson. I expect quite a bit of points to be scored in this game, and you can easily stack him up with Will Fuller or Brandon Cooks, who had a huge game last week. And you can run that back with some of the Tennessee Titans options as well. So Watson, I wouldn't say he's my favorite quarterback on the week when you're factoring in the price tags, but I still think he's a pretty good option and a decent game for DFS purposes this weekend. I uh, dropped down to Matt Ryan, 6,600, who he's been he's been absolutely abysmal the past few weeks. And look, the guy is awful without Julio Jones. I think we learned our lesson last week. I did like Matt Ryan last week because of the mainly because of the price and the matchup, and it just didn't really work out. He's been pretty bad, and no Julio Jones definitely caps his upside. He just kind of turns into mush without him, and we don't know if Julio Jones is going to be back this week. If he is back, I think that puts Matt Ryan in play in a good matchup here versus Minnesota, and which should be a pretty high-scoring game. According to Vegas, we have two of some of the worst defenses in the league right now. But if Julio Jones is out, I don't really want to pay nearly $7,000 for Matt Ryan. So he's kind of on a questionable tag here for Matt Ryan by making my player pool. But this is a good matchup. We know the Falcons like to throw the ball quite a bit. And they are three and a half point dogs on the road, meaning they should be throwing the ball quite a bit in this game. Todd Gurley kind of stole the touchdowns last week. But still, Matt Ryan's throwing the ball over 40 times per game right now. Nearly 300 passing yards per game. The touchdowns are pretty low at only 1.4 touchdowns per game. But I believe he's only had one passing touchdown the past two or three weeks, <laughs> that's pretty bad. But I have to imagine those touchdowns are going to come up. And he started the season off hot. So if he has Julio Jones back, I think he should have a pretty solid bounce back game here. But again, we just have to see if Julio Jones ends up practicing this week and if he's good to go. Now, surprisingly, the Vikings are 8th DBA versus the pass. And they've been a little bit worse versus the run. But they're still allowing 22.3 DraftKings points per game to quarterbacks, and that's 23rd out of 32 teams. So they've been pretty lower half when it comes to opposing quarterbacks. Nearly 300 passing yards per game and two passing touchdowns per game. So Matt Ryan, I think is a pretty good spot for him, but this is kind of dependent on if Julio Jones is playing or not. And another really good game I like for fantasy purposes is this Jacksonville-Detroit game. Pretty two poor defenses here in okay offenses. I wouldn't say the Lions and Jaguars have the best offenses in the world, but they have some fun fantasy options. Like Gardner Minshew's fun, Minshew is fun. James Robinson's, I wouldn't say James Robinson is fun, but he's a good fantasy player because he's been getting so much volume this year. You got DJ Chark and LaVisca Chenault. Then you got Matthew Stafford. The running backs aren't fun for Detroit, but you got Kenny Galladay. Marvin Jones, then TJ Hawkinson. So I think this could be a pretty good game for DFS purposes. And Vegas has this as a pretty high scoring game with a 54 and a half point over under and only a three and a half point spread. So I'll definitely have some interest here. And these guys really aren't super expensive as well. So 
Should be a good game to target, but we we'll start with Gardner Minshew here, Gardner Minshew here at 6,400, and they have the lower team total between the two, as the Lions have a near 30 in point, near, near 30 point implied team total this week, which is very high for Detroit. But Jacksonville has struggled through the air this season. But anyway, Minshew, he's been solid this year. Nearly 300 passing yards per game, two passing touchdowns per game, throwing the ball nearly 40 times per game with a 70% completion percentage. He also, also has a little bit of rushing upside as well. Now, the matchup versus the Lions, they are 15th DVA versus the pass, allowing 21.8 DraftKings points per to quarterbacks. They've been a little bit worse versus the run compared to the pass, but this is not a defense that I'm going to be too scared of. And Minshew, I think he's a fine option in a game which should be pretty solid for DFS purposes. Although, if I had to pick between the two, I'm going to side with Matthew Stafford here Matthew Stafford here, just because Jacksonville is dead last DBA versus the pass this year. We saw Deshaun Watson have a really strong game versus them last week, and it's just a good spot. They have a team total nearly 30 this week, and he's only 6,300. I like pairing up with Kenny Galladay and also TJ Hawkinson as well. You can always run that back with someone on the Jaguars, but Stafford, numbers this year aren't crazy good. Only 254 passing yards per game, two passing touchdowns. 60% completion percentage, but still the matchup is what's going to get me here. Their 32nd DBA versus the pass, the Jaguars, that is, and they're allowing 24.1 DraftKings points per game to the position. So I like the spot here for Matthew Stafford. I like what Vegas is telling us, that the Lions should be <laughs> getting a lot of points scored in this game, and I wouldn't say their run game's that good, so I expect a lot of this to be from done through the air. And I think Matthew Stafford could have a decent 2-3, maybe, maybe 4 touchdown game. So I like that price tag for Stafford. Uh, Kirk Cousins, 6,100. So uh, it started pretty ugly for the Vikings if you're watching the uh, Monday Night Football game. Or no, sorry, that was the Sunday Night Football game. So Thielen, he did absolutely like nothing in the first half. And then he ended up having like two touchdowns, only 100 yards and nearly 30 fantasy points. It ended up being a pretty solid day. And Kirk Cousins, he draws a very, very soft matchup here versus Atlanta, which has been one of the worst teams in the league versus the air this season. We're just looking at the numbers. Like, I know Kirk Cousins hasn't been great this year. Only 27 pass attempts per game, 226 uh, passing yards per game, and 1.6 passing touchdowns per game. They're a team that likes to run the ball, but Dalvin Cook, he is injured. So, I mean, Alexander Madison was still fine. I still expect them to try to establish the run here, but it's very, very easy to pass on Atlanta, and I like that price tag on Kirk Cousins. Atlanta's 30th DVA versus the pass this season, allowing the most points per game to quarterbacks at 33.1 points per game. 345 passing yards per game and three passing touchdowns. So Kirk Cousins, I know he's never an exciting roster, and this is a run-first team for the most part, but he's only 6,100. And if you're going to pair him up with Thielen, it's not going to absolutely break the bank because he's not that expensive of a quarterback. And you could always run that stack back with someone. You can even use Justin Jefferson as well. And you could always run that back with someone like Julio Jones if he happens to be in, Calvin Ridley. I was going to say Hayden Hurst, but I don't really want to say Hayden Hurst or maybe someone like Russell Gage. So, I like Kirk Cousins' price tag. Even though he's never a fun roster, it's a very good matchup for him. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick at 5,900. He just continues to put up decent games at fair price tags. And the Dolphins actually have a pretty high implied team total this week at nearly 29 points, and they're 9.5 point favorites at home versus the Jets. We know how bad the Jets have been this season. And looking at Ryan uh, Fitzpatrick's game log this year, besides week one versus New England where he had eight points, he's been great. 27, 25, 26, and 30. And that's... Like, he had two soft matchups versus Seattle and Jacksonville, but he's played the 49ers and the Buffalo Bills as well. And I know he struggled versus the Patriots, but still, $1,500 versus the Jets? That's a pretty good price tag. I don't mind that. I think that's fine in cash games. He's averaging 270 passing yards per game. He's also got a bit of a rushing floor as well. He's averaging 26 rushing yards per game with uh, nearly half a rushing touchdown per game as well. It's a pretty high completion percentage. It's actually the highest of all these guys here. So Ryan Fitzpatrick, $5,900. I don't mind that at all versus Jets defense, which is not very good. They're 31st DBA versus the pass and allowing over 20 DraftKings points per game to the position. So Fitzpatrick, I don't mind that spot at all for the price tag. And also at a similar price tag, we have another Ryan here and Ryan Tannehill at 5900 And I feel like his... Uh, Font's a little bit lower, but anyway, <laughs> he's in a good spot here versus Houston. And the Titans, they had a huge game last night on Tuesday. Now, maybe there's a slight concern that since they played on Tuesday, it's a pretty short week here going from Tuesday to Sunday. I'm not really too concerned about that, and I think the Titans probably continue to score a lot of points here versus Houston, and Vegas doesn't really have any concerns there either. 28-point implied team totally scored over 40 points last night versus the Bills. It's a tight three-point spread. It should be a pretty back-and-forth game. And besides Derrick Henry, it's pretty affordable on the on the Titans side of this game I mean Tannehill's cheap he's below 6k AJ Brown's a little bit too cheap I mean I like him quite a bit I think I'm gonna make him the thumbnail of this video Derrick Henry's expensive but John Smith isn't terrible uh, price wise so I don't think Ryan Tannehill is a bad play at all and if you're looking at his numbers this season 
I mean, 250 passing yards per game, nearly two and a half passing touchdowns per game. He also has some rushing upside as well. He had that nice rushing touchdown last night. Now, the matchup versus Houston, they are allowing only 19.2 DraftKings points per game to quarterbacks, and they're 11th DVA versus the pass. But, like, Vegas isn't really giving up too much respect here for Houston's defense. And I know Derrick Henry can certainly do a lot of damage in this game. I do like Derrick Henry quite a bit. But Tannehill, he just, since last year, since, what, week seven when he took over, he's been very, very solid. One of the more higher-rated quarterbacks, especially over on PFF as well. So Tannehill at that price point, I think it's actually a pretty solid spot. I think it's kind of a toss-up if you want to use Ryan Pat Fitzpatrick or Ryan Tannehill. I'd say if you're using Derrick Henry, it probably it's probably not the best correlation to run it with uh, Ryan Tannehill. So if you go with the Derrick Henry route, you could use Ryan Fitzpatrick. If you go the Tannehill route, maybe you skip out using Henry and go with another running back. Yeah, with that being said, we can move on to the running back position, which there's quite a few good spots here. I'm going to start with the guy I was just talking about, Derrick Henry at $7,300. We know we're going to go with him every single week. We're going to get high volume, and he's going to do good things on the field usually. Now, he didn't have a great game yardage-wise last night, but he still found the end zone two times, which is something Derrick Henry can do. It's very hard to stop this guy on the goal line. and You know, as long as the game goes on, it's just harder and harder to tackle this guy. And I don't know if you guys saw it, but I'm sure you did. But he just absolutely threw Josh Norman last night. That was, in, that was insane. But anyway, I like Derrick Henry. This is a good matchup versus Houston. They've struggled more on the ground so far than they have versus the past this season. The three-point favorites at home with a 28-point implied team total. He's going to get you around 30 touches here in Houston. They're 26 DB versus the run. I mean, 30.2 DraftKings points per game to running backs and 140 rushing yards per game. So I like the spot for Henry here. And if you want to make him your RB1 on this slate, I would say go for it. Aaron Jones is also on this slate, but don't love the matchup versus Tampa Bay. They've been pretty tough versus running backs, but he's kind of matchup proof. He's a capable pass catcher. And, but I kind of like Derrick Henry just a little bit more at 7,300. Alexander Madison, 7,200. Dalvin Cook got hit with an injury on Sunday Night Football, and Madison took over, and he looked pretty good. As he had 20 carries, 112 yards, didn't get to the end zone, but he caught three balls on three targets. And don't keep in mind, that wasn't a full game of work for Alexander Madison. Dalvin Cook was playing, but he didn't get hurt. Now, it's not completely like concrete that he's going to be the starter. There's like a slim, slim chance Dalvin Cook could play, but I think everything is pointing towards Alexander Madison just taking over as the RB1 for the Minnesota Vikings this week, and it's a pretty good spot here versus Atlanta. Atlanta has been worse versus the pass compared to versus the run. As you can see, 10th DVA versus the run, but still allowing 30 DraftKings points per game to running backs, which is bottom 10 in the league. And they also really struggle versus pass catching running backs, which Madison, he's a fine pass catching running back. We saw him caught three balls last week, and I mean, he's going to be RB1 on the team that likes to run the ball quite a bit. 29 implied team total here for the Vikings. They're playing at home, three and a half point favorites. So, yeah, you can sign me up for some Alexander Madison. I know it doesn't feel great spending up that much for him. And DraftKings did a very good job pricing him up alongside Dalvin Cook. But even given the price tag, you can make a case for him being the best running back play on the entire slate as long as Dalvin Cook is out. Uh, Mike Davis, $7,000. He just continues to have good games every single week. And it sounds like uh, CMC is not going to be back this week. I mean, we had some... Uh, I felt like we all thought he was going to be back this week, but he was not practicing today, and it's kind of pointing towards him being out a week, which I don't think the Panthers are going to mind too much. Let's let him rest up. And Mike Davis, I mean, the guy is just a hard runner. He's just very good every single week. And the thing we love most about Mike Davis is that he's a very capable pass catcher. I was looking at his target numbers the past four weeks. And keep in mind, in week two, he wasn't even the starter for the full entire game. But he had eight targets in that game, nine in week three, six in week four. And he had ten targets last week on nine catches. And it was a great spot for Atlanta. They do really struggle versus pass catching running backs. And Mike Davis was just in a smash spot. And like 15 points, 23, 22, and 29. He's just been fantastic for CMC. And I'm kind of wondering what they're going to do when CMC gets back. Obviously, CMC is going to be the starting running back and handle the majority of the workload. But... In the past, it's just been CMC every single play. I feel like they might sprinkle in Mike Davis because he's been absolutely balling out and try to keep CMC fresh. I don't know, just a thought there. But anyway, I know he's getting priced up at $7,000, and this is not a good matchup versus Chicago, but also a little bit of revenge narrative there. But, I mean, his pass catching ability just gives him such a high floor. I feel like people aren't going to be on Mike Davis too much this week because of the price point and the matchup, but... I love what he's doing in the passing game right now. He's got a near 20% target share, a 20% weight opportunity share, and the guys look great. So I know the matchup's not great here for Chicago. Only allowing 23 DraftKings points for him to running backs and 17 DVA versus the run, but I still think Mike Davis is certainly playable due to that pass-catching ability. 
James Robinson, 6,800. A bit of a disappointing game last last week for him, but it's a good spot here versus Detroit if you're looking at their numbers. 31st DBA versus the run, allowing 33.3 DraftKings points per game to running backs and nearly 150 rushing yards per game as well. And Robinson's also involved in the passing game with nearly 4.5 targets per game and nearly 40 receiving yards per game as well. So Robinson, I think he's a fine... I mean, I would say GPP play over cash. I just doesn't. I don't feel like many people would want to play James Robinson in cash games. But I love the spot here for him, and there should be a lot of points scored in this game. And Robinson, he's one of the better running backs on the season, just consistency wise, because he's going to get volume each and every single week. And you can't say that about a lot of running backs. Then dropping out Jonathan Taylor, he's 6400. He gets a good spot here versus Cincinnati, who we know just doesn't have the greatest defense in the world. But I gotta be honest, Jonathan Taylor has been a bit disappointing. I expected much higher things from Jonathan Taylor. But the matchup versus Cincy, it's fine. They're decent favorites at home here. Eight point favorites with a near team total of nearly twenty-eight. He's getting fifteen and a half rushing attempts per game, only two and a half targets per game. But look, Cincinnati, okay, so they're only allowing twenty-four point eight draft. Can you point you the running backs so their twenty second DV versus the run and allowing hundred and thirty one rushing yards per game? So Jonathan Taylor of sixty four hundred. I think he's in a pretty good spot, and I like that price point. He's getting a little bit, a little bit too low because if we're looking at a salary the past few weeks, it's been at seven thousand sixty six hundred and sixty two hundred. So it was actually a little bit cheaper last week. I was thinking it was a little bit higher, but still, I think that price point is fine at sixty four hundred. And I like the spot versus Cincinnati. It's a softer spot than it was versus Cleveland last week. David Montgomery fifty eight hundred. He gets the dream matchup versus Carolina. That's the team that's been absolutely awful versus running backs so far. They're getting the most DraftKings points per game to running backs. 29 DVA versus the run, but 37.4 DraftKings points per game to the running back position, over 100 rushing yards per game, and 1.6 rushing touchdowns per game. And they've been getting up some uh, damage in the pass game to running backs as well, with nearly nine catches per game to the position. So David Montgomery, we know he's a capable pass catcher. Now, if we're looking at his numbers on the season, only 12.6 rushing attempts per game. But the past two weeks, he's been pretty involved in the passing game. He had eight targets last night, or not last night, on last Thursday night. Uh, eight targets, caught seven of them for 30 yards. He just kept getting dump-offs from Nick Foles all game. Then he had six targets the week part of that versus Indianapolis. And this is a great spot here versus the Carolina Panthers. And they are two-and-a-half-point dogs, but I think Dave Montgomery for the 800 should be able to pay off his price tag as long as he gets into the end zone, which there's usually a good chance of a running back getting to the end zone versus Carolina. The Miles Gaskin, 5,400. Ne- never a fun play to play Miles Gaskin, but he's getting volume each and every single week, around 20 touches, and he's involved in the passing game as well. He's getting five targets per game. They're also nine and a half point favorites at home versus the Jets. They have a team total of nearly 29. And if you're looking at how the Jets have been versus the run this year, ninth DVOA, but allowing 31.5 DraftKings points per game versus running backs and 110 rushing yards per game and over a rushing touchdown per game. So Gaskin, he's fine at 5,400 like that price point. And it's mainly just a volume and matchup play for the most part. Then we move on to the wide receiver spot. We got a bunch of high volume guys up top here in Devontae Adams, Adam Thielen, potentially Julio Jones, and Kenny Galladay. And really, pretty much all these guys get quite a bit of volume. But anyway, we'll start up top with Devontae Adams at $8,000. We thought he was going to play two weeks ago, but he should be 100% here. They said he's not going to play until he's 100%, and he took the week off when it sounded like he could have played two weeks ago. Then he had the bye week. So I'm assuming Devontae Adams is fresh and good to go, and if that's the case, he's pretty much going to be your wide receiver one on any single slate given his volume. Aaron Rodgers has been tremendous this season. Like He is playing out of his mind, which is awesome to see because I'm a big Aaron Rodgers fan. But you got to like Devontae Adams here. I know it's a bit pricey, and the matchup versus Tampa Bay is not great. They do have a pretty strong defense. They're fourth DBA versus the pass, and only allowing 36.1 DraftKings points per game to wide receivers. But it's Devontae Adams. He's getting 10 targets per game, nearly 100 receiving yards per game, a 30% target share. Keep in mind, he pretty much sat a half versus Detroit quite some time ago, so his numbers can be skewed a little bit as well. So Devontae Adams, assuming he is fully good to go, which it sounds like he is, he's pretty much the wide receiver one. But he's definitely not an absolute must-play. Now, Adam Thielen, 7,300. Love the spot. I'd probably side with Adam Thielen over Adams just because he's a little bit cheaper, and I love this matchup versus Atlanta. Atlanta sucks versus wide receivers. It's, it just happens every single week. We saw DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson both have really good games last week versus Atlanta, and Adam Thielen. He's coming off a huge game versus Seattle, which is the team that's actually worse versus wide receivers. But still, Atlanta is pretty close. And the Vikings have a 29 implied team total, only 3.5 points spread. I expect a lot of points to be scored here in Thielen, getting a ton of volume this season, nearly 9 targets per game, over receiving touchdown per game, a 33% target share, nearly 50% market share of the team's air yards, 620 air yards on the season, and an 8 out of 14.1. In the matchup, he's also got a huge wide receiver versus cornerback matchup, according to PFF this week, but 
They're 30th DVA versus the pass, allowing 44.6 DraftKings points per game and 215 receiving yards as well. So Adam Thielen in a great spot here, and I love that. I was going to say I love that price tag, which I don't love the price tag, but I like the discount you get off of Adam Thielen. Julio Jones, this is just depending on if he's going to play or not, obviously. If he plays, he's only 6,700, and we'll have to see if the injury is going to hold him back in the game a little bit. But don't forget, all the way back in week one, when he was somewhat healthy, he had 12 targets in that game and had nine catches for 157 yards. So, so if he's going to go, I like that price tag. It's a good matchup here versus Minnesota. They've just been a pretty struggling defense so far this season. They're allowing 45.6 DraftKings points per game to wide receivers, which is 27th, and nearly 200 receiving yards per game and nearly two receiving touchdowns per game as well. So Jones, if he's good to go, I like him, but it can be a bit of a risky option there. Kenny Galladay, 6,200. Love the spot for Detroit here. They have a very high team total, one of the highest on the entire slate. This should be a pretty good game for DFS purposes. Now, Galladay hasn't really played too much this season, but when he has played, he's done well. He's getting nearly eight targets per game. He's got a receiving touchdown per game, a 25% target share, and a 30% mark share of the team's air yards, and I like the spot here. I mean, he's got a huge wide receiver versus cornerback matchup, one of the biggest of the week, according to PFF, and Jacksonville is dead last TV versus the pass. So, Kenny Galladay, he's your obvious pairing with Matthew Stafford. Terry McLaurin, 5,700 down week last week, but it's a good spot here versus New York. It's just unfortunate for him that he has to deal with some pretty poor QB play for the most part, but the Giants aren't the best defense in the world. They're 23rd DV overs to pass, and allowing over 40 DraftKings points being to wide receivers, and he's kind of like the only guy there for the most part, so I don't mind McLaurin at 5,700, but I do like A.J. Brown over him at 5,600. He's going to be one of my more favorite plays on the entire slate this week. He's, coming from really good. he's only played a couple of games this year. But his game last night was really nice to see. He had seven catches on nine targets for 82 yards and a touchdown. And the guy is just a freak of nature. When you look at him, he is huge. He's fast. He runs good routes. And he's fun to watch. And at $5,600, he's got to be one of the top plays on the slate. I have no idea what ownership projections are going to be. It's only Wednesday, and we just had a Tuesday game. So everyone's a little bit of a day behind. But I would imagine A.J. Brown should be pretty popular. I mean, the Titans have a high team total. I mean, he's really cheap to pair up with Ryan Tannehill. I can see being used this week, so... I don't see a reason to not like A.J. Brown, to be honest. And Again, only two-game sample size, but eight targets per game so far, 25% target share. A. Dots not been very high, but we know he's got big playability. We saw it last week. Got a decent advantage to the wide receiver versus quarterback matchup column. Now, the Texans have been a little bit better versus the pass compared to the run, but it's still A.J. Brown, and I'm not really scared of his matchup. So definitely like that price tag. Deontay Johnson, 4,900. He just keeps getting hurt. If he's good to go, I do like him. But if we're looking at these numbers, they're going to be a bit skewed because he'll start these games, and then he just doesn't finish them, and then it kind of kills him in the target share department, and then it kills him in the target department. But before, when he had a couple of games in where he wasn't hurt, his target share was at nearly 30%. And I'm not sure if people are going to go back here because if he does play, people have been burned by him a couple of times, and Chase Claypool went that absolutely monster game, so I could see people chasing the Claypool game. But if Johnson's good to go, I like him pretty much the most out of all these Pittsburgh wide receivers. He's also the cheapest at 4,900, and it's a good spot versus Cleveland. They, I mean, they've had a, they have a decent defense, but they still give it up to wide receivers quite a bit, and their defensive line's kind of like their uh, that's like where they excel at. The secondary, it's I mean they have Denzel Ward, but it's been a bit shaky for sure, and that definitely shows up in these numbers here. As they're allowing nearly 50 DraftKings points per game to wide receivers which is 30th and over 200 receiving yards per game and nearly two receiving touchdowns per game. So Johnson, if he's good to go, he should get you close to double-digit targets, and he's only $4,900. So. And Big Ben typically just plays very well versus Cleveland at home. So, And then we have two punt options here in Bird and Mooney. I mean, if just if you need pure punt plays, I don't really think you have to go down this deep this week because there's plenty of other value plays or guys that we just don't absolutely have to spend up on. But Bird, he's been getting sufficient volume. I believe he had nearly 10 targets last game. And Cam Newton should be back, which is obviously a boost to this offense overall. He's getting five and a half targets per game right now, a 17% target share, eight out of 11.5, and a 30% market share of the team's air yards. And at only $3,500, that's not too bad. And also, this matchup here versus Denver is pretty good. They are uh, allowing 45.6 DraftKings points per game to wide receivers, which is 27th and nearly 2 receiving yards per game. So, Burt at 3,500, I think, is a fine pump play. And then Mooney is the absolute bare minimum at 3,000. And he's getting quite some looks, quite a few looks here. And it's not that bad given his price tag. And Carolina's defense doesn't really give me too many concerns here. Now, they're better versus the pass than they are versus the run. But, man, he's $3,000 if you just need a pure plump play. Then the tight ends. 
Mark Andrews, he's the fine spend-up option if you want to pair him up with Lamar Jackson, but I can only see myself getting here in tournaments. He does seem to score a lot of touchdowns, and he's kind of killing it in the air yards department. Uh, 26% marks to the team's air yards, 12.3 ADOT, 21% target share. And this is a good matchup versus Philly, too. He's got a big tight end versus safety matchup here per PFF, and Philly has struggled versus the tight end position, allowing nearly 20 draft kings points per game. They're 29th DVA versus the pass. They've been a pretty poor pass defense this year, and they're just giving up the tight ends, and Mark Andrews, he's fine, but I don't, I don't really like spending up for tight end too much. I usually try to find a value or a mid-range tight end. Hawkinson, 5,300. This is mainly just getting exposure to the Detroit Lions here. If you want to pair him up with Stafford and Galladay, I have no issues with that at all. He's been fine. He hasn't really set the world on fire, but he's a capable pass catching tight end for sure. He's got plenty of upside. And they're allowing 70 receiving yards per game to the position, 16 points per game, 32nd DBA versus the pass, and it's this soft spot here for Hawkinson. Uh, John Smith, 5,200, he continues to have good games each and every single week. He's averaging over a receiving touchdown per game, six and a half targets per game, had a touchdown last night, 55 receiving yards per game. So he's a fine pairing with Ryan Tannehill, and that's why I said the Titans, they should have some decent ownership because it's not that hard to stack these guys up. Tannehill, below 6K. A.J. Brown, below 6K. John Smith, below 6K. And, and now we're going to have to see what happens with Corey Davis and Adam Humphreys. I assume they'll be back, which, can, you know, it's going to disperse the targets a little bit more. But still, John Smith's been playing just fine this season. So, don't mind John. Zach Ertz, he just looks completely washed. Like, it's gross. He's just not breaking tackles. He's not really getting that much separation. But he's okay at 5,000. I mean, he's getting six and a half targets per game, which is all right. 39% weight opportunity share. But I'm not expecting too much out of here. He does... I don't know, it's not the greatest spot here, but <laughs> allowing 12.5 draft kings points per game to position, which is bottom half in the league. But, uh, it's kind of just a volume play, but I'm not expecting too much out of Zach Gertz. But tight end's usually a weak position overall, which is the only reason he's on here. I'd probably see myself going with some of these cheap options here because I like these prices on Ebron, Hooper, Thomas, and Smith. Ebron gets a good spot versus Cleveland. They have struggled versus tight ends this season, allowing 17.6 DraftKings points per game, which is bottom five in the entire league. And he's getting targets every single week. We know the guy's got upside, five targets per game. So Ebron's fine. Hooper, he had double-digit targets last week. He's actually been more involved as the season gone, has gone on, and I like that price point, 3,900. Pittsburgh is a pretty good defense, and they're only allowing nine DraftKings points per game to the position, which is top 10 in the league. But at $3,900, Hooper's a good tight end, and the volume he's been getting recently, I think that makes him a decent play at $3,900. Logan Thomas, $3,300. Look, he gets targets, but he doesn't really do anything with them. Nearly six targets per game, but only 2.8 catches per game. Does have a 22% market share of the team's air yards and a 44% weight opportunity share, but that doesn't mean too much on this Washington football team offense. It's just not a good offense. They have a team total of only 20 this week, which is actually higher than normal. And it's a good spot versus the Giants, but... He's only on here because of the price point. He's dirt cheap, but the, even the Giants haven't been bad versus tight ends, though. Only eight DraftKings points allowed per game to the position, but he's there if you need a value play. And then if you want a really, really cheap play, he's only $2,500. And if we all played Troutman at $2,500, I feel like we could play some Irv Smith at $2,500. He had his best game of the year last week versus Seattle, and he actually had five targets, which was about equal to his season total. <laughs> in one game, but still had four catches for 64 yards, and had a pretty decent game where he had 10 points. Now, I'm not saying he's a surefire thing. He's had multiple games of zero points, but if he can get us a handful of targets, and it's a really good matchup versus Atlanta, if you're looking at their numbers versus tight end so far this season, loving uh, 21.5 draft his points per game to the position, which is third worst, So, and over receiving touchdown per game, so Irv Smith, he might be able to just get you a sneaky touchdown only $2,500 maybe if he gets you a couple of catches I think you'll take it because if you spend $2,500 for a tight end you can pretty much do whatever you want with your lineup especially if you're going cheap at quarterback so I think he's interesting as a pump play and the defenses they're just they are what they are pick teams that are playing at home they have a they're favored and it's pretty much what I did here now I believe I have the Ravens are not at home but they're very expensive but they're just a good defense and Carson Wentz has been making some mistakes this year so they're okay for the spend-ups. The Patriots, the Colts, they're decent home favorites. And the Dolphins, 2,900. I can see them being popular. They're going up against the New York Jets, which I don't think anyone's too scared of the New York Jets. They have a 19-point implied team total, and they're 9.5-point favorites at home. I'm not saying the Dolphins' defense is very good, but they are cheap, and it opens up your lineup a bit. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video, guys. I hope it was helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, Consider hitting that subscribe button. It really does help me out, and I really do appreciate that. We're like halfway to 7K, which is awesome, so I do appreciate all the support there. 
you want to follow me on social media, you can do that. If you want to support me on Patreon, links down below in the description. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, comment below. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next one.